Hey FlossTube, this is Brian. Welcome back. This is going to be a short video. I've had a request to do a tutorial on how to use my, my tracking spreadsheets and I thought that would be a good idea so that's what I'm going to do today. Um, I use Google Sheets to share my spreadsheets so that's why I have my browser open to Google Sheets. Um, if I actually use Excel to do the actual tracking it's just easier to share for me to share with Google Sheets. So if you want to use Excel, you're welcome to do that. I'll show you how to how to get these files into Excel. There will be links to these spreadsheets in the notes below. And if you click on those links, that will copy these spreadsheets into your own Google Sheets account, into your own Google account. And from there you can do everything that I'm going to show you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this cross-stitch log template. This is a template of, of the spreadsheet that I use. Now if you want to use this in Excel, all you have to do is you click on File, Download as Microsoft Excel, and that will download it onto your own computer in Excel format. And then you can open it up in Excel and, and, and do everything that I'm going to do here in Excel. I don't want to edit this file because this is this is my master template. I want to what I want to do is I want to make a copy of this file so that I can I can do a new start. So I click on file, make a copy, and I have just started a new project. So I'm going to use that as an example. So uh, my new project is The Spirit of Christmas by Lavender and Lace. So I'm going to name this new document the Spirit of Christmas Log. And that opens, opens up my new file in here. You'll see it now it's now named uh, the name of my project. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click on Project Card. And in here I am going to enter in all the information about this project. Uh, the reason why, I, I mean this is easy, right? This is be, these spreadsheets have kind of become my cross-stitch diary. So if I ever want to remember something about something I have stitched, I can open, I can find the information in here. So I'm going to fill in this information. The spirit of Christmas. The designer is lavender and lace. I am stitching it on 32 count raw bell. Fast linen. Um, I am going to be. I am using DMC, and also there are a couple of Krennic colors. Um, it is 162 stitches wide and 166 stitches tall, and that calculates the um, that calculates the number of stitches that are in this project. So, and then I started this project on November 26, 2017. This is the number of days since I've started the project. Uh, when I finish it, I will put in the day, the day that I complete all the cross stitching. And that, and then this will turn in the different, to the difference between these two days to tell me the total number of days that I worked on it. I can enter the number of days that it will take me to backstitch. Uh, this does this project doesn't have a lot of backstitching, so it won't take very long to do the backstitching. And then this is um, this is actually the number of uh, days that I actually stitch on a project. So if I day have a days where I don't stitch on it, then this number will be different from this number. And I also have the ability to track the the hours that I stitch. I have I have a hard time being really consistent on doing that, but I can do that. The, the, I have the ability to do that if I want. I just have a hard time remembering to start my timer and to stop it. So, um, okay. So now all of our information is entered in here. If you come over here to the daily pace tab, now you will see that I have the number of stitches and the number of blocks that are available. Um, this number of blocks is basically the number of stitches divided by uh, 100. If I start 
tracking a project that I have already started, I can enter in the number of stitches that I have already completed, and then the number of completed blocks will be also be entered in here. And that way you can pick up with the project that you're halfway through. Uh, another thing that you can do, you can, you can do one of two things. Uh, you can look at your chart and you can mark out all the blocks that don't have stitches in them and enter that into, into here. That will make your predictions as to when the project will be finished. It will make them uh, uh, be a little bit more accurate. Uh, or the other thing that you can do, and it's what I have typically been, been doing, is as I cover an empty block, I count it in here and count it in the number as the number of stitches that I'm doing. Uh, either way works. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have stitched on this for several days, and I'm going to enter in the 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 number of stitches that I that I've been put in so far. Oops, that is 100. Okay, so now you'll see that as I typed in the numbers that I, I have that this all of these values get calculated and I'm just going to show you talk a little bit about um, what these are so I on these two dates I actually uh, counted my time tracked my time so I'm going to put that in as well okay so the number of blocks that I stitched this is basically the number of stitches divided by a hundred and then this is a running total of the blocks that I have stitched up until this point so uh, last night I put in 300 stitches that's three blocks and that means I've stitched 42.3 blocks basically 40 4200 stitches um, and then this is the number of blocks that are remaining so you'll see I have 230 blocks left to go more or less this is a count of the number of days that I've been stitching and this real day stitching that's the number of days that i have have stitched minus the states that i have not stitched so just so that you can see this if i if tonight i didn't stitch anything then you'll see that the day stitching will increase but the real day stitching will not okay um then this is um this is basically a calculation of the the pace that I am working on and these are these days right here they are rolling averages so what this means is that down here let me take this zero out this is the no, that, that's the number of, of blocks that I've done in one in, in that day so it's equal to the the, the number the blocks here. These all are rolling averages. So this is the average of the number of stitches that I put in in the last 10 days, in the last 25 days, in the last 50 days, in the last 100 days, and, and in the last 100 days. And as I stitch more on these, these numbers are going to are going to diverge. Right now, um, I've stitched. Right now. They're all the same, but they will change. And th this is also configurable. So up here, like let's say I wanted to, st I wanted to track how much I'd stitched in the last week, in the last month, in the last uh, I don't know quarter, which should be what four, three times four, three times thirty is ninety, about ninety. What we'll say ninety two, and whoops. And in the last year, okay, you'll see that I changed all of these days change based on these cells. And you'll see that now my seven days average is a little bit different from my 30 day average. Okay, 
So this is my the calculation of the pace. This is the number of these columns are the number of days that are remaining. So I can say um, if I had if I had stitched if I continue to stitch at the same pace that I have done, this is the number of days that it will take me to do. So using my seven day rolling average, right now it's looking like I have 60 days left to stitch. So that's about a completion of that. And then based on that, I can calculate the day that I will be expect that I kind of expect to finish. So for my one day pace, it'd be February 17th, uh, seven day pace, February 1st, um, 30 days and up is January 21st. So you, it gives you kind of a feel for for how how many how how when you can expect to complete things, um, I think these are a little bit slow because as I said, I'm tracking my the empty blocks as I go, and I'm in a part of the design where there's a lot of heavy stitching. Once I hit, there's another part of the design where there's a lot of empty blocks, and when I hit that, then then my pace is going to increase and my completion prediction is going to come down a little bit. So you'll see I'm currently have 15 about 15% 15 of this complete. I've been stitching for 9 days in a row on this piece and I haven't missed a day yet. So if I I'll put that zero back in over here. So if I have a day that 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 doesn't that I don't stitch then my stitch streak will go to zero and my no stitch streak will go go to 1. Okay? So that's all those all these columns, and that that gives you a feel for your your daily tracking. Now, as you fill this in, um, then you can also I also have a, a sheet that like this automatically sums up the number of stitches that I do each week. So you'll see that the last week I stitched 38 blocks, and my my current week, I stitched. I've stitched four blocks. So the last couple of days is my is the beginning of my next week. Once again, you can you can change the number of weeks for your pace calculation just by changing that. You're not going to see any difference in that right now, uh, just because I haven't stitched that long yet. Um, and then I do the same thing on a monthly basis. So for this month, so far I've hit 42.3. And that will continue to, to increase until I hit the end of the month, and then the, and then this number will will get filled in. And finally, these are the charts that that have that can help me kind of see visualize how things are going. Um, really, right now I have charts for my daily progress, my monthly progress, and. Um, sorry my weekly progress and my monthly progress these will eventually get filled in right now they're not because there's not any data to graph so you'll see the number of days remaining you'll can you can see that my one block per day is pretty gradually decreasing and you'll see that I've got my seven days has started to diverge a little convert diverge a little bit so that kind of tells me what that tells me is that um, on my new week I am actually stitching slower uh, than than the average. I've kind of slowed down over the past couple of days. Um, this is my pace calculations. Uh, so you'll see my my pace has been steadily dropping. That's because I started out with a bunch of empty squares, and I haven't really run into a bunch of empty squares since then. So my pace has been con consistently dropping. Uh, this is a, a, a completion prediction. I found that when I work on a rotation that about the 100 days rolling average is pretty accurate. Uh, it, eventually everything settles down after a little while. Things bounce around quite a bit when I first start a project, but they'll eventually they'll eventually settle down into into something. So this is the number of blocks that I've stitched, and you can see these. This line is eventually going to go down to zero, and this line will eventually go up to the total number of blocks that I have. And then I also have a graph showing 
how far I am percentage wise so you can see the percentage will gradually increase to 100 um, and then this is like the total days that I've stitched so you can see this will eventually go up to the the number of days that I stitched so that's everything uh, just also one thing you may see all of these NAs in here um, and they may bug you a little bit the reason why they are here is to handle some quirkiness in Excel and what happens is Excel graphs an empty cell as a zero so if I didn't have these NAs in here my charts would come up here and then they'd immediately drop to zero until I filled them in with data I don't like that and so I have NAs in here if you're working in Google Sheets or if you're working in Excel and you don't care about everything going to zero uh, that's easily fixed uh, you can change these all to blank cells and you'll see um, this is the formula for each cell what what all you need to do is like go through across one line and change this NA to just a blank spot so you'll see that's just uh, two commas right together if you go across and and make all those changes across one row and then copy that row down down the the spreadsheet then all of the NAs will go will go, will go away and in Google in, in Google Sheets those values aren't going to be calculated so it, I, I would prefer that but Excel is really kind of quirky with this um, also I've got until February you may have a project that takes longer if you need to add column add rows uh, what I do to make it so that my graphs automatically adjust is I insert cells in the middle like this so I will highlight the number of rows that I want to insert and then I hit my uh, right mouse button and click on insert 11 above that'll insert a bunch of rows before the end and then all I have to do is hit control shift and the arrow to select the entire row hit control C for copy and then I hit shift and arrows down to the end that selects those rows and then I hit control B for paste and that will fill in the data with the with the formulas okay so that's my cross stitch log uh, feel free to use it feel free to if there's any are any changes you'd like to make I mean you can do what you want if you have any ideas as to how I can make things better feel free to comment below and let me know because I, I'm curious to see if there's any ideas of other things that you'd like to track you think would be good to track or uh, whatever I'm, I'm, I'm just curious to know what you could come up with okay uh, the other the other sheet that I want to I want to show you is um, my stitching log template this is what I use to to track the number of stitches that I, I put in over the the last year uh, you'll see I've actually kind of filled this in with some dummy data um, so this is like a daily stitch log and I fill in the number of stitches I fill in the number of stitches that I do every day and also the the projects that I am working on when I do this and as I fill these in um, these cells will automatically populate and they'll automatically these are like running totals of what I've done over the entire year um, and also if there's a day that I don't stitch then I put in zero here and type none here um, and that will be counted as a day that I didn't stitch if I'm stitching on a project and I don't do stitches like for example I'm back stitching then I put back stitch in here and that will count the number of days that I'm back stitching as well um, completion log so this basically is what I in my real spreadsheet I have a list of all of the projects that I've completed uh, with information about them so that I can I can look back and, and look at that information 
uh, WIP log. This is filled in with the projects that I am working on. And I also have, this is like, if I want to keep track of the number of starts that I make or the number of finishes that I have, then I fill in this data over here. Monthly summaries. This is kind of this is kind of ugly, but I haven't figured out a better way to arrange things. So um, basically, these are um, these take the data that I've put in the stitching log and break it out by month. And you'll see that I've, I, I've entered some data in at the beginning. It's also here. And it's also logged down here as well. So um, this is what I use to do monthly summaries. Um, if there's any Excel gurus out here, um, this is kind of manually done and it's kind of ugly. If I ever add months, then I have to do a whole bunch of manual copy and paste. So if there are any Excel gurus out there that would know a better way to like calculate and arrange for uh, monthly, monthly data out of my yearly stitch log, I'd, I'd be interested to hear uh, what you would think. And then basically these are my graphs that I that I've used to show in my video. Like this is my stitches trend. Um, you can you can go through and look at all of these. Like the monthly things, uh, these are not automatically generated. You would have to modify this graph to point to the month in the monthly summaries that you wanted to graph. That's kind of the ugliness of all of this. Um, and then the annual stitches, Pareto, um, this is all the annual data. So you can, you can look through these graphs and see if there's anything you like. Um, but you can use this one to keep track of your yearly progress. I actually, on my spreadsheet, I have two years going, and at the end of the year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a third year. Um, but anyway... At any rate, if uh, uh, feel free to, to copy it and use it and modify it to, to whatever you want. And as I said, if there's anything that you would like to see, if, if there are any improvements that you think would be great, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, I plan on doing a, an update video before Christmas. I'm not sure quite when. I'm kind of waiting to get... Uh, some more progress on the project that I'm working on right now. Uh, so, but look for an update video pretty soon, I think. It's uh, partly a matter of finding some time to actually film it and edit it, and partly uh, getting to a point where I think I'm ready to do an update. At any rate, I hope that you have a great month so far, and we will talk to you later. Thanks. Goodbye.